I beat. What happened to I beat that man? Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. We're back live to get down with us. 804-447-0601. As we mentioned in the last segment, we got a guest on the live line with us, drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in 2004. Yeah. After a collegiate cl- uh, career in Rutgers University, New Jersey, spending four years in Dallas. Spent some time with the Miami Dolphins, Denver Broncos, of course, last year as a member of the New England Patriots who played in the Super Bowl. We got Nate Jones on the line. What's going on, brother? What's going on, fellas? How you? appreciate y'all having me. Yeah, we appreciate you joining us today. We're going to get right to it, man. First question for you. You played in the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah, last year up in uh, Indy. What the heck is it like to play in the Super Bowl, man? I mean – we fans in here. Yeah, we, for real. We we fans in here, and we watch it on television. And I'll be honest with you. You're the first cat I ever talked to who was actually at the Super Bowl. So, first question right out the gate. What was that like? I mean, you got to look at it like it, it doesn't get – it really doesn't get any better than that. I mean, you, you're at the professional level. You're at the top of your game. And then you're at the, the, the biggest game on that level. So, I mean, it, it was kind of surreal, you know, just – fun it was serious at times but you had to take it all in um you know you're up there for two weeks preparing for this game you know the whole world is literally you know most a lot of people are watching um and it, it, you just gotta you gotta take it in stride man but once it gets going once after that, after that first kickoff you gotta calm your nerves and realize it, it's, it's just another game at that point and you know unfortunately uh, you know, we walked away with the second place prize, but uh, it was it was still it was still worth it, and I, I mean I'll never forget it. I tell you about the party that I had at the crib, and that's actually going to lead me to another question that I have for you. When you was growing up, you grew up in New Jersey. What was your team like when you was growing up? I'm mean, obviously you you went on and you got a chance yeah. to play, so I'm guessing that it kind of changes a little bit once you're in the league. But when you was growing up, who did Young Nate root for? Uh, I was a I was a diehard. 49 fan. I, I was, yeah, I, I love Jerry Rice and Joe Montana and, and all those guys, Ricky Waters, you know, Burton Hanks, all those guys. I, I loved all those guys when I was growing up. But I was an 80s baby, so they was, they was hot back then. So right, I, I, right. So I jumped on that bandwagon early. <laughs> but, uh, hey, man, you know, yeah, you were old enough. A bunch of, yeah, we battled the Cowboys. I That's mean, right. I, you, I, hate, I actually hated the Cowboys coming up, ironically. So it was. Well, you, I, I still that. hate them. You can't. Hey, look, um, Nate. You came by. You came by your hate of the Cowboys, honestly, because I tell you, I could not stand. Could not. I cannot stand them Cowboys. And you know, I right. wa- I will watch you play, and I'm like, man, I. You know what? I'm, that's 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 my dude right there. But you know what? He got on the wrong uniform, man. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a lot of issues. Uh... All the teams I play for are very. Uh, I got a lot of enemies, man. Cowboys. <laughs> a lot of people hated the Patriots. I mean, Denver. I didn't have too many issues with Denver. Everybody kind of liked Denver, but the Cowboys and the Patriots. Uh, I got a lot of slack for that <laughs> for both of those teams. I so, bet. I bet. So back to the Super Bowl. You know, I'm a big. I guess I'm a big media guy. How how different was the media for you know during a week for you at the Super Bowl than it was like during a normal week? I mean, during normal week of uh, uh, work, you know, you got you got the same, you know, fifteen to twenty media people you see every week They're in the locker room after practice, and they come in after the game. The Super Bowl, uh, I mean, there was there were days where it was half a stadium full of media. Like I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of media outlets from every. I mean, I was doing I was doing interviews with Mexican news stations <laughs> and, and people across the world. It, it was it was crazy. I mean, it's really a time to really get you know get your face on, get your name out there, and you know obviously the bigger the star, the more you know the more attention. But I mean, it was you know it was some little celebrity chicks out there running around. I mean, it, it, it was crazy. You know what I mean? It was really really like we were in a you know a, a fish tank and all eyes was on us. But it. it you know, like I said, you take it in stride. It, it's fun. You remember it. And, uh, you know, you just can't let it go to your head, though. Cool. Well, now, what was the craziest question they asked you? Oh, man. They, oh, Lord. They was, oh, man. That's the question. Um, 
Man, they oh I know it was this this little this little this little kid was interviewing me. I don't know where he was from. <laughs> yeah, from Nickelodeon, man. Get a he, he was a little little kid. Yeah, they let the little kid interview me. And the little kid asked me had I ever had I ever gone to the bathroom on myself <laughs> while I, while I played. <laughs> So, uh, we're not gonna ask I, you to answer I, that I question. To, I, had to, I had to honestly answer him and tell him, "Yeah." Oh, <laughs> oh, oh you serious? <laughs> yeah, man. That's nah, it was it was a, a funny story actually in college. Um, like I, I I cramp a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I had to always hydrate, take IVs before the game. You know what I mean? And we was in a tight game, bro, and they wouldn't let me come out. I was like, I got a piss. They would not let me come out. <laughs> I let me. I asked, I was a young, I asked my corner, I said, yo, what do I do? He said, man, you better do what you got to do right here on this field. I said, man, come on, man, don't, don't, don't flat me. Like, bro, you ain't coming off the game. And I'll be damned, man. Luckily, it was a rainy day, so it pretty <laughs> fell, but I, I went ahead and handled my business right there on the field. Hey, bro, I don't blame you. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Hey, look, like you said, it was a rainy, it was a rainy day and it was sweat. So, so who knew, right? Nobody knows, man, but everybody knows now. But Yo, it's, it's hard to hey, look, it's all love. hey, look, <laughs> hey, look, hey, we the highest rated show on GlobalScaleRadio.net, so ain't no telling how many people know hey, that story that's, now. Hey, exactly. that's all good. I ain't tripping. I'm telling you, I just see worse, bro. <laughs> man, Nate, this is, this is a more of a serious question. You hear about some of the crazy things players do in the off season, you know, drinking and driving. Um, I'm not going to talk bad about Plastico. Uh, Vic, but what kind of um, let's see? Somebody want to say Michael Irvin? I ain't gonna mention you know certain names, but what kind of things but, does the NFL do to prepare you from not doing what I would call stupid ish? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's 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 hard, man, because it, it's really hard to tell grown men what to do once you, once they get a little bit of money in their hands. You guys probably all know. I mean, it, it's very it's got to start somewhere else, man. And I mean, they, 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 the teams do. They have a player personnel. They have a department that really helps guys try to keep them busy in the off season, get them in the program. If you want to study music? Go do a little music internship. They offer little internships. They offer, you know, the, the college classes, which I have done. They offer little things if you want to get into the media. They try to keep guys busy, you know, because. When, and downtime is when we, you know, we tend to get in a lot of trouble. I say we because I'm part of the population, but I, I've, been, I've stayed out of trouble. But it, when you have downtime and there's nothing to do and you just got you just sitting there, and that's, that's when guys get in trouble. So, um, I mean, it's really all about keeping yourself busy. Myself, I love to travel. I done seen the world, man. And just whatever you could do, pick up a hobby or whatever it is and just do it rather than just sitting around with your boys, smoking, drinking, whatever it is. I agree with um, you totally. That, that's the best advice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, also, you know, the big controversy with Bounty Gate, do you, again, don't tell everything. But isn't there some type of written, unwritten rule, you know, where players do go after a certain player? I mean, you get a scouting report that this person's had an injury of some sort. Don't you? I mean, that's well, you common. know, I mean, the, the sport, the sport is the sport is a physical sport. It's, it's a contact sport, all right. So it, it's always a fine line. It's a gray area between what's what's what you know what's just what's justified and what becomes more or less illegal or unfair, or unjustified. So. I mean, yeah, if, if there's a guy's hurt in a certain area, I mean, you know, the guys may say, hey, man, if he's going to play hurt, you know, we're going to expose that. You know what I mean? Right. And, and there's, a, there's a professional way to do it. And, you know, you, if, you know, if a guy's out there, he's fair game. I mean, I will say that. But uh, there is a line that, you know, you can't cross, obviously. Um, and whatever happened in New Orleans, I mean, what I could say is New Orleans probably took the rap for a lot of tea. I mean, everybody comes out and says, man, Bounty's been around forever. You know oh, what I mean? agree. So, uh, they've been around forever, and, and I, I, they have been around forever. Right. And, and that's it, just what it is. It, it happens in every rap. level of the sport, in my yeah. opinion. College? Yeah, every, in every sport. Right, right. So, it just so happens New Orleans got a little too cocky with it, a little too arrogant with it, whatever it is. But but as you could just see, a lot of those suspensions just got um, 
they just got uplifted. So Appeal, I don't know, right. you know, I don't know what's going to happen now. Some of those guys, they can still play, and I don't know what became of it. Um, it might have got blown out of proportion a little bit in the off season, but uh, you know that the CBA kind of reversed some of the decisions. So that, that's a win. That's a small win for the players. It's a small win for the players. Right. Now, does that same union represent the coaches? Say it again. What does that same union represent the coaches? Um, the coaches suspension still stands. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm not exactly sure. I know we. Our players' union, I, I, I don't think the coaches are involved. I think they have their own little whatever, their own thing going on. The coaches are kind of stuck in the middle a little bit. But, right. um, I mean, I, and actually, in my opinion, and this is my humble opinion, it, it, if something was going on uh, illegal down in New Orleans, if it was, uh, I mean, the coaches are, are, are definitely just as liable. So, um, again, I don't, we don't know. But I know right now the players, uh, their suspensions have been uplifted. So, good for them. Yeah, and, keep. Uh, but the coaches still stand, so I, I don't know what that says, but I mean, it obviously says something. <laughs> keep, keeping with the somewhat serious tone that we've taken, and we're gonna get back to Kleinen in a minute. But uh, with you on the line, there's a couple of things that we've talked about week to week that we'd like to kind of get your impression of. And one of those things is the replacement rep- referees uh, that we have seen throughout the preseason, of course, throughout week one, and you know, we got two more games tonight. Uh, and my guess is they'll be out there for the foreseeable future. As a player, do you see there being a difference between the referees who you may know uh, versus the referees that was doing the lingerie league two months ago? I mean, what's what's the deal with the differences? I mean, as fans, yeah. we can see a few things, but as someone that's on the field, what's the deal? Kind of unfortunate that, that – uh you know, that wasn't able to get squared away. I mean, you look at there was a strike today in Chicago with the teachers. I mean, anytime you see something like that, it, it, when two sides can't come to an agreement, that's, that's, that's not a good thing. But, um, I mean, there's definitely some, there's been some bad calls. There's been some embarrassing moments for them up until now, and that's, that's to be expected. Right. Give them credit for trying, give them credit for trying, but it, it ain't, it's, it ain't going to hurt them until it really hurts them until they call somebody a game, which they already maybe have. You know, I've heard they've made some dome head calls this week. But you hate to blame it on the refs, but, you know, this is the quicker we can get this resolved, the less they got to talk about and the less you can, you know, because right now they're just going to be scapegoats. You know, and whenever something goes wrong, it's going to come back to them. And, right. you know, this season could be a, a wash if, if it gets, you know, if it gets too crazy out there because as we get going – you know, into the playoffs and all that. I mean, it's, you know, you got to really have a good a good set of refs out there. And if it's not, I mean, it could really affect the game. Right. Do you guys have relationships not with, with the refs? Not not asking like personal relationships, but sometimes you do see maybe a conversation that may be going on on the field, and you can't really tell oh, yeah. if it's I about mean, guys. Guys, you know, guys definitely try to butter them up. Or if you've been in the league for a while, you may have seen the same ref about eight, nine, ten years, you definitely try to have a conversation. And basically what guys are doing is, um, you know, if there's something you see on film, like, yo, listen, man, this dude right here, just watch out for that. You right. know what I mean? you A guy do that or a coach may go up to him and say, listen, that left tackle, man, this dude jumps every play. You know, And they just may say a little, it, it, it'll kind of bring it to the ref's attention. Right. And a lot of times it, it works. You know what I mean? A lot of times you may get that call in the game. You know, if you bring something to his attention, say, look, man, this this, this – this, this receiver pushes off every time. Well, you know, or whatever it is, you may just throw it out there jokingly, I mean, and that's what you see guys doing when they're talking to them. They're just they're throwing little things out in the air just so the ref – sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But a lot of times, you know, if you've been in the league for a while, and, you, know, you, or you tell a ref something before the game, you know, you ain't really snitching. You're just like, hey, man, I'm just, I'm just telling you, this is what this is what happened. Right. And sometimes you make a call out of it. Sometimes his, It almost kind of reminds me when – kind of move into basketball, you see Michael Jordan might get a call that John Starks oh, won't yeah, get. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, and it and, and goes without being said. Obviously, there's some players that are protected. You know, the quarterbacks, certain individuals are definitely going to get protected more right. than others. I, mean, I, unfortunately, play corner when we, you know, we, we have a very, very, very daunting task in covering these receivers, and oh, we, yeah. we can't touch them. I mean, we can't anything to them, so... We hate them. We hate the cause. We hate the five yard. We hate the five yard penalty. We hate all that because we're we got to be more scrutinized on the field. I mean, you touch the receiver, the flag is coming out. You know what I mean? But, I I tell you this much. You know, 
I, I miss one referee in particular. And I ain't saying I got a man crush on him. But Ed Hockley, <laughs> I'm straight up missing Ed, man. We crack up. Hey, I Nate, mean, for hey, real. Hey, Nate, Carlton and I and another one of our big homies, Big Joe, we sit, we watch the games, and we crack up off this dude, right? Because when he <laughs> you got a crush on Ed. You got a man crush. We all kind of got a man crush, on. Man crush on Ed, right? Because I don't. When, when, he, uh, when he does his little motions, it always seems like he's flexing his muscles like Hulk Hogan or something. <laughs> Ed is Ed is bigger than a lot of people on the field. I know <laughs> he's probably about the only ref that can push a brother back yeah, and, and get away Ed, with Ed, it. Ed, Ed is a I don't know if y'all know Ed is a lawyer by day. Oh, oh for real? Yeah, <laughs> Yo, Ed, 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 a lot of those refs are all they they're all professionals, man. You wouldn't even know. I know J- Carrie's a lawyer. Uh, Ed Hockley is a lawyer. Ed a lot of those guys have lawyer, like really yo. good day jobs. They're really smart guys. You know what I mean? But Ed is. Ed done been hitting the gym a little bit, man. He yeah, he, he gets it in. He more than hitting it's the gym. He tearing the gym up. up. We're going to do a couple of real quick hits. All right, Nate? I'm going to ask you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw a name at you. And just give me real quick your thoughts on that guy. I got about five names on this list. All right? First name, Tim Hold Tebow. On. Say it again. You broke out. Tim Tebow, you said? First name. I got about five names of people I just kind of want your quick your yeah. quick thoughts on. First name is Tim Tebow. Okay. Tim Tebow. Okay, okay. I played with Tim. I played with Tim in Denver. Um, Tim, Tim is a, Tim is a, he's, he's a, he's a great guy. He is what he is. What you see on TV, he definitely walks that walk. Um, you know, as far as on the field, I think, again, he is what he is. And uh, he's going to forever be that. He's not going to be Tom Brady. He's not going to be Peyton Manning. He's not going to sit in the pocket and be that guy for you. But he can win some games for you. And if he's in the right way, he's effective. Gotcha. Eli Manning. I have to say he's probably my dark horse, man. I have to, I have to, I have to give Eli Manning more props than than I than I've given him in the past. Cause he's uh, he's got two Super Bowls now. He's got more than his brother. And if you go by Super Bowls, he's better than Peyton. Peyton got better stats. But Eli got more rings. So again, I I I, I didn't give him as much credit as I should have. He's got me twice. He got me once in Dallas in '07. He got me this year in the Super Bowl. So I, I, he he gained a little bit of my respect. Got you. A little bit. Tony Romo. Tony Romo. <laughs> uh, Romo, Romo. I know Romo very well, too. I know Romo when he was a third-string guy in Dallas. You know what I mean? A young guy. Uh, talented guy. He's come a long way. He's got extreme, a lot of pressure on him here in Dallas. I live in Dallas right now. I obviously used to play here. A lot of pressure on him. Uh, he handles it well. He, he, I think this is his year. He, he, it's going to be make a break for him. He has to. If he doesn't do something big this year, he might be in trouble. RG three. RG three is special, special, special. I, I watched him play yesterday. Uh, didn't know much about the kid, but uh, I think under the tutelage of uh, Shanahan, he's going to have a really good career. And I think the Redskins, is there. again, they they might be sleepers in the NFC East, y'all Cowboys and Giants fans. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just calling it what it is. You got to watch yeah. it. <laughs> you, made, you just made a fan out of Big Rube over here. Well, I'm already a fan. Colin Banks is a fan, but I think you just picked up a third one. Uh, My, <laughs> Michael Vick. Ah, uh, man. You know, hands down, one of the best athletes of the game. Um, you know, I, I, I really he he went, he's been through a lot. Obviously, we you know what happened. He's a VA guy right down there, an hour from you guys. Um, I mean, I, I respect what he's been through. I really do. I, I, I'm happy for his comeback, uh, and I think he's a changed man. I really do. Um, I don't know how good the Eagles will be this year. I know he has a little durability issues, but I, I really respect what he's been through. I, I'm happy for him, and uh, hopefully, he'll be alright. Last name, Bill Parcells. <laughs> Bill Parcells. I talked to Bill Parcells last week, but two weeks ago. It, it was his birthday. I shot him a text. Um, Bill Parcells, I, I have to give him credit. He gave me my shot in the league. Yeah. And um, he gave me my shot in the league. He did. So, I, obviously, I can't say anything bad about the guy. He he, he kind of took me in and, and made me a player along with some of the other, other coaches he had under him. So, Again, I give him credit for getting me going, teaching me to, how to play this league, how to stay in this league. So, again, my hat's off to him for sure. We got a we got a fan question, and this fan 
used to be the host of this show. Jay Grizzy Green is listening to us. Used to host the Green Room, which preceded Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. His question is, of the coaches you played uh, and worked for, worked with, played with, uh, which one is your favorite one, whether it be a defensive coordinator or a head coach or something along position. those lines, um, position, p- position coach? Yeah, I would have to say, um, you know, outside of Parcells, I, I had a position coach named Todd Bowles. He's a Jersey guy. I went to Temple University. From Dallas, right? Yeah, he came, he, he came on my second year in Dallas, and he came, he came to Miami with me. He 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 took me under his wing, man. He had my back, and he uh, he taught me a lot about the game. And I, I always he's actually a, he's actually the defensive back coach in Philadelphia right now. Okay, the Eagles. So um, I I really I, outside of Parcells, he really 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 probably been my, you know my most influential uh, coach in the, in the NFL. And I always I always give it I always let him know that uh, he's he's doing well, man. He'll be he'll be a coordinator one day. You remember Todd Bowles? He'll, he's coming up, man. He's coming up in the game. He's a real good coach, really respected in the league. You'll see him as a coordinator, maybe head coach one day for sure. Now, Marcus hit you with the offensive players. I'm gonna just give you a list of defensive linemen or linebackers and like to get your ranking on them, all right? Demarcus Ware, Arakpo, um, um, Justin Babin, and J- uh, JPP. Jason Pierre-Paul. Jason, P- Jason Pierre-Paul. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Demarcus Ware. I know. All right. Yeah. How would you rank them? Yes, he was on point last night. Yeah, you gotta watch out for Vaughn. Vaughn is just, he's a young D Ware man. I said that when he first got into the league. So, but out of the ones you named, I would say uh, D Ware and then uh, uh man, J- JPP and Arakpo. That's a toss. So I probably had to go with JPP and Arakpo and that. Who's the toughest? Jay Grizzly is asking one more question from him. Who's the toughest wide out you had to you had to guard? three guys, man. These are, these are three of the best guys in the league right now, but I mean, between Fitzgerald and, and Andre Johnson, I, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> you got a headache either way you look at it that way. I mean, those two guys are, 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 are there, and down one, two, whoever, you know, you have, I haven't, I haven't really gone against Calvin Johnson yet, personally, but from what I have, I, Fitzgerald and Johnson, uh, Calvin, I mean, uh, Andre Johnson, and then you got Welker, man. When Welker was in his prime in the slot, he was <laughs> he Welker? was a problem. And that's why I made my living at the nickel. So Welker was obviously the king of the slot at the time, about you know three, four years ago. He he's going through some stuff now, I'm, but I'm, when he was in his prime, man, he he you know he did ten thousand moves in five yards. You couldn't even, I, I, you may know be, what I, mean? so, I may be way off on this yeah. one, Nate. I may be way off on this one, but just watching Welker reminds me of Wayne Crebet. Yeah, exactly. They're same, exactly. Same kind of guy. Uh, Welker probably a little bit more trophy than Wayne, but same kind of guy. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Last question. Any surprises yesterday? You see anything that jumped out at you? Um, a few things. I think. I think my biggest surprise was how well. Um, I think my biggest surprise was how well RG3 played as a rookie first game. I mean, that was that was a, that was a serious coming out party, man. I, I, I'll be interested to see if he, if he can do it again this week and keep it up. But I was, I think that was my biggest shock. I was, and my other one was, uh, I had to say, I guess the Jets, man, because everybody was down on them and they 48. came out and, and blew the Bills out. So I don't know what that's about. I don't know if the Bills are just really bad or or the Jets. Uh, they something to reckon with this year, but that, I was that that game kind of shocked me. For a team that didn't score a touchdown in the preseason to come out 
and score 48 points in the first game of the season. I had this debate with someone earlier, Nate. They were trying to tell me, well, the Bills aren't worth nothing. But the, you know what? You didn't say that Saturday. <laughs> you you said it on Monday, you know. And so yeah, yeah, to see yeah, that, yeah. yeah. they they nah, they definitely shocked me. I'm not going to lie because I, 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 I'm looking back at my head like, oh, they about to have one of them years, and they, they came out. So I, I to, like I said, this first week one. Right. But, I, you know, we can visit back here week eight, see what teams are at. But they, I think the Redskins and the Jets are my two surprises of the, of the week so far. I haven't seen the games tonight yet, but right now I'd like say those two. Once again, you're making Big Rube real happy. All right, I appreciate you joining us today. Do you have any projects, anything that you want to kind of promote, anything that's going on with you that you want to share, any shout-outs, anything like that before we let you get um, let uh, you go? Shout-out to the fam, Mark. I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, just, you know, right now I'm a free agent, so, uh, you know, just, just keep me in your prayers, and I'm going into my ninth year, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, hopefully I got some new fans in the VA area. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, Definitely. I, whenever you want me to come back on, let me know. Give me a call. Well, we uh, we appreciate you joining us. We're going to have you back on again at some point in the season. Uh, we appreciate yeah. you giving us your time. And uh, once again, <laughs> once again uh, I did want to kind of mention that little party that we had on Super Bowl night. There was a lot of pro-Nate people in the room, so you don't have to feel bad about <laughs> us Giants fans giving you too much grief. It was a lot of pro. Yeah, it was a yeah, lot of pro I Nate going. A lot of those, man. I'm rooting for the Giants. I hope you do well. but yeah. I don't want you to win. Yeah, we I got had... a lot of those texts. Oh, oh <laughs> so yeah. It was, it was kind of bittersweet for that moment, but it was good. Like I said, the experience was, was unreal, and you know, hopefully, I can get back there before my career is officially done. But you know, who knows? If I don't, I made it, so it, it's an accomplishment. You know, I won't forget. So. Good deal, Nate. We appreciate you joining us tonight, man. You have a good night, bro. Appreciate you guys. Y'all have a good night. All right. All right. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. That was Nate Jones, later the Dallas Cowboys, later of the Miami Dolphins, Denver Broncos, and the New England Patriots. We appreciate him joining us. 804-447-0601 to get in on the rest of the discussion. We're getting ready to move on and kind of go a quick recap of the NFL games that we saw this past season. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Be back in a minute. 